and flip the caliber back over into its original position. Take a wrench and your brake bleeder hose and put it over the bleeder hole. Put the wrench on first. Make sure you put your oil drain pan under the end of the hose to catch the brake fluid and be sure to dispose the fluid properly. Open the bleeder valve about a quarter of a turn of your wrench. Expand the caliper spreader slowly until you meet resistance. Don't force the calipers to open anymore. Tighten the brake bleeder valve. Take the hose off and the caliper spreaders out. Take the old brake pads out. This is the outboard pad. And this is the inboard pad. The inboard pad has three clips as you can see here that hold it into the piston. Put your inboard pad in first, then set the outboard pad in. Hold the pads in place as you flip the caliper back over into its original position. The ears of the brake shoes sit right along the edge here. Now screw each bolt in by hand, then use your socket wrench to tighten them up. Now you need to put the retaining spring back on the caliper. Just pop each end into the holes on the side and push them in so that they are properly seated. Make sure that the end on top slips behind the caliper as shown here. Here's an example of a brake rotor that's been seriously neglected. You can see here the deep grooves in it that's caused by the rivets of the old brake pads. Here's an example of a new rotor. You can see that the surface is nice and smooth. This is what your rotor should look like. If they have grooves or other signs of damage, get them turned by a machine shop or replaced. Now you're ready to put your tire back on.